The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 13077 in the name of Liam MacArthur on supporting CME in work. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Liam MacArthur to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr MacArthur. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. With Mental Health Awareness Week running from the 11th to the 17th of May, I'm delighted to be leading this latest debate on the issue of mental health. I wish to thank all those who signed my motion, particularly those who did so with unseemly haste, allowing it to secure the requisite cross-party support by the allotted deadline. Uh, and I'm obviously grateful to those who have stayed on to participate this evening and look forward to hearing their contributions. The issue of how we improve services to and the quality of life of those who suffer poor mental health is one I know commands broad and heartfelt support amongst members across this chamber. That is very much to be welcomed as we continue our collective efforts to ensure that mental health is better understood, more effectively treated and the stigma surrounded it tackled head on. Without wishing to detract from this cross-party consensus, which I know is highly valued by those working in the sector as well as those campaigning for improvements on behalf of sufferers, I take particular satisfaction from the priority that Liberal Democrats have attached to this issue over a number of years. As the Minister is aware, we have consistently called for equal treatment of mental and physical health to be put on a statutory footing in Scotland as it is south of the border. In conjunction with the measures already set out in the Government's mental health strategy, we believe this would send a powerful message. In practical terms, it would also ensure that the needs of those suffering poor mental health are reflected more fully when decisions about allocating funding are taken. Of course, given the enormous pressure under which the health service in Scotland is currently operating, simply drawing funds away from treatment of physical health would only compound these problems. That is why I was so proud of the specific commitment made by the Liberal Democrats to invest £350 million more in mental health services in Scotland, £3.5 billion across the UK, as part of an £8 billion real terms increase in funding for our NHS. Sadly, the focus of the recent election campaign appeared uh, rather more uh, to be on who was willing to do uh, deals with whom uh, than the niceties of specific uh, policy positions. Nevertheless, I think the commitment was and remains absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, distressingly, given the outcome uh, last Thursday, the chance of it actually now happening it seemed vanishingly small. Deputy Presiding Officer, while there are many aspects of this debate around mental health that I could have chosen to focus on, I felt that the efforts being made to stamp out stigma and discrimination in the workplace deserved our attention this time round. Colleagues will not need reminding, I'm sure, that as well as affecting one in four of the overall population at some stage in their life, mental, health, uh, mental illness remains the dominant health problem for people of working age. It damages careers, relationships and lives. The financial costs, let alone the human costs, are colossal. In Scotland alone, the cost to employers is estimated to be around £2 billion. I therefore welcome the current programme being undertaken by Sam H and the Mental Health Foundation under the banner of See Me at Work. As an aside, I was a little surprised that See Me appeared slightly less than enthusiastic about the prospect of me lodging this motion and allowing Parliament an opportunity to debate these issues today. See Me has always enjoyed strong cross-party support and been very open to working with colleagues from all parties. I know from previous debates that we have all benefited greatly from the expertise and advice available within the organisation. This approach has been one of CME's real strengths. I sincerely hope that as it moves from its campaign into its programme phase, CME will not make the mistake of seeing itself or be treated by ministers as somehow a creature of government. As part of the current programme, however, CME has helpfully taken soundings on workers' attitudes to mental health in the workplace. Some of the findings are fascinating, if alarming. Just under half of people think that someone in their workplace would be unlikely to disclose their mental health problem for fear of losing their job. More than half thought fear of missing out on promotion would encourage a work colleague to conceal any mental health issue. These findings echo comments I've heard at a local level in Orkney. The Blyde Trust suggested its members are often reluctant to declare a mental health problem in applications as they fear it will lead to an immediate knockback. This is perhaps unsurprising as research indicates that one in four employers would not employ someone with a mental health problem, particularly in a role that involves contact with the public or with customers. 
The case study cited in CME's briefing about Gemma Patterson, who's denied her dream job in the Navy despite passing the entrance exam and fitness tests, illustrates this point perfectly. Gemma's history of mental, health, uh, mental ill health was used to fail her on medical grounds, despite her doctor, counsellor and psychiatrist all testifying that she had come out of her mental health problems stronger and more able to cope. The figures I've quote, quoted may be out of date, but I would hope See Me and Work can help address the sort of damaging misconceptions that held back Gemma and discourage others from being open about their own mental health. Certainly, the local mental health strategy being developed in Orkney is looking to place a heavy emphasis on working with and educating local employers about mental health. Hopefully, this work can draw on some of the resources, training material and positive case studies being developed uh, by CME to back up their four-stage engagement strategy with employers. This staged approach seems very sensible, getting buy-in first of all and providing basic information about how employers can support their workforce in terms of mental health. Through a process of finding out more about staff attitudes, understanding and experience of mental health, employers can then develop plans for improvement, the success of which can be attracted over time and continuously improved. At this point, I would wish to put in a brief word on behalf of the independent ag advocacy sector and the role it can play in helping deliver the sort of changes we wish to see in the workplace. Very often in employment welfare matters, an individual will be advised that they can be supported by a colleague or a trade union representative. This is absolutely appropriate in many instances. Under the 2003 Mental Health Act, however, anyone with a mental health diagnosis has a statutory right to an independent advocate. Advocacy Orkney's Andy Spence-Jones explained to me recently that early intervention of advocacy can stop an employment matter progressing, culminating in disciplinary procedures or suspensions. Andy talks of using advocacy's expertise <coughs> in mental health to work with employers, helping them to recognise that employees with a mental health condition need support to process their options and clearly articulate their thoughts. This, she argues, can help an individual remain in employment, benefiting in turn both the employee and the employer. Other good work taking place, and which deserves a mention in this context, is the clubhouse service run through the Blind Trust in Orkney. Since it started four years ago, 26 clubhouse members have moved into employment, both full and part-time, this out of a total membership of 90. While transition into employment is not the primary purpose of the clubhouse, it does demonstrate that where appropriate support is available, both to individuals and a, with a mental health problem and potential employers, real advances can be made. Deputy Presiding Officer, we have made important progress in raising awareness and understanding of mental health over recent years. I'm convinced this has helped reduce stigma, but there is so much more to do. See me estimate that just less than a quarter of people think their work, workplace has a good understanding of employee mental health. More encouragingly, almost nine out of ten surveyed by See me want a better understanding of issues so that they can behave appropriately. I look forward to hearing what others, including the Minister, have to say and hope we can all play our part in encouraging as many employers and businesses right across Scotland to make a firm and long-term commitment to engaging with a programme that can make a real difference to the lives of the very many people who suffer poor mental health. Thank you. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes or so, please. And I call Dennis Robertson to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and can I thank Lee MacArthur for bringing this very important debate to the Chamber. I, I think one aspect, uh, Presiding Officer, I was a bit disappointed that Lee MacArthur decided to bring the politics into it, uh, and to which I'm not going to, uh, I suppose, uh, maybe rise to that bait. Because I think it's too important an issue in, in many respects. Um, and I remember, as I, I believe a responsible employer, and I believe, I hope, I still am, but in, when I was in social work, uh, one of the things we did do, and one of the things I was, I was very keen to do, was to bring in external organisations to equip the employees about mental health, to equip them to be able to identify where perhaps maybe stress or anxiety or maybe early signs of depression were, were maybe more common than people realised. But also to equip them and give them the, the skills and the confidence to come to their uh, line managers and discuss what could have been or perceived to have been perhaps a, a mental health issue. And I think this is really important. But what was important with regard to bringing in that training to a workplace presiding officer is to ensure that the line management fully understand and comprehend 
that if someone does come to them with a perceived uh, a mental health problem, that they're listened to and that they're understood and that the appropriate support is given at that time. And that's the really important thing because when we give support and when we ensure that, uh, uh, that the, uh, there's confidentiality around that support, the person, generally speaking, can come back and they will come back. And I know that when we were looking, you know, uh, through sort of staff analysis and we, we sort of worked through things, those that had come with early issues were the people that were more empowered later. And those were the same people that spoke openly then to their peer group within the, the staff rooms and openly said, no, I, I actually had a problem and I spoke to someone. And that gives the confidence maybe for others to do the same. Now, it's not always easy, presiding officer, to do that. But Lee MacArthur's absolutely right. There is a stigma around, a stigma that we still associate around mental health and mental illness. And it's something we need to sort of ensure that we're moving away from. There is nothing wrong with having an illness. There is nothing wrong if that illness happens to be a mental health issue. Presiding officer, I lived for many years uh, through that mental health issues. And one of the examples that CME came with was, was someone with an eating disorder. And that reminded me so much of my daughter because my daughter's employer at the time when she was going to work had no idea, had, had just no recognition of her specific or special needs. And I think this is really important that when an employer does recognize that they have this ability to be, be more flexible, because a person with, say, long-term conditions, for instance, and it could be someone requiring dialysis, that person maybe is a fantastic employee, but maybe for the fear of losing their job, they actually develop a mental health problem on top of that physical problem. And that is because of the uncertainty, perhaps, that they're given from maybe even some of their peers or indeed from their line management. So it is about actually raising that awareness and ensuring that people are equipped at an employer level to deal with the issues of people with mental health at work. But we need to ensure that we equip the employees, those at work, to be able to trust their employer, to be able to go to their employer without fear that they could lose their job just because they're saying, I have an illness. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. And I now call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Uh, President Officer, may I join uh, Liam MacArthur in welcoming this year's uh, Mental Health Awareness uh, Week, which offers a chance to challenge the stigma that still surrounds mental health issues and also allows us to focus on the particular issue of the effect of stigma in the workplace. I'm glad that we also have an opportunity today to highlight the efforts of CME over many years to tackle the lack of understanding surrounding mental health issues. The CME campaign was launched in October 2002 and over the past 13 years it has worked tirelessly to protect the rights of those who live with mental ill health and bring an end to the discrimination that so often excludes them from the everyday activities we take for granted. Work is such an activity. The ability to contribute and feel included and more importantly accepted as an individual is a fundamental human need. This starts with tackling ignorance towards mental health conditions and encouraging a more tolerant workplace where employees feel able to discuss any emotional issues with colleagues. As the UK charity Mind points out, employment is more than just a way of earning a living. It provides identity, contact and friendship with other people, a way of putting structure to your life and an opportunity to meet goals and to contribute. CME's most recent campaign, CME in Work, aims to ensure that workers have more positive experiences when relating problems to their employer, thus changing the internal culture of the workplace to one of compassion and support. The programme will support organisations to improve practice on mental health and provide an environment where staff are able to talk openly rather than living with their problem in silence, which not only leads to a decreased quality of life for the person, but also uh, impacts negatively on the wider workplace. As a YouGov survey of Scottish workers commissioned by CME has highlighted, 48% of Scottish workers have stated that people don't tell their employers about mental health problems for fear of losing their job. 
The same poll also found that 55% thought employees would be unlikely to disclose a mental illness for fear of being passed over promotion or moved to another post. The research provides a persuasive case for encouraging a compassionate workplace where feelings of isolation caused by poor mental health are discussed as part of a resilient workforce. From that first job interview to promotion and training, employers must be given the necessary information to ensure that all employees reach their full potential. There is also the economic case. Figures from SAMH in 2011 suggested that mental illness costs Scottish employers over £2 billion every year. Figures from studies published by the UK Faculty of Public Health estimate that sickness absence due to mental ill health costs around £8 billion per year. 70 million working days missed each year, or an average of 2.8 days per year per UK employee. See Me in Work works. It works because it puts the necessary information in the hands of employers and makes a convincing case for a better, more compassionate workplace. A number of employers are already working with CME to develop new programmes, including Network Rail, Edinburgh City Council and the Edinburgh agency Lewis Creative. I hope that anybody watching today will look into the benefits of working with the programme and visit the CME and Work website for links on the four steps they can take towards a better, more mentally aware workplace. CME will support organisations through this process and provide updates, resources and essential reports that actively include staff in building a more understanding culture. This is a practical, proactive step that I know we will all welcome as it will have so many beneficial wider impacts. There is no space for discrimination in an economy that must work for everyone. I support the motion and congratulate Liam MacArthur for bringing it today. Thank you very much. And I now call Mary Scanlon to be followed by Hans Alamalik. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, presiding officer. <coughs> I would also like to thank Liam uh, MacArthur for giving us the opportunity to debate mental health. And uh, I won't rise to the debate of the politics, but maybe a wee bit of advice for someone with more grey hair than Liam has, and that is to wait for a little bit more than a week before he uh, confers judgment on the Conservative <coughs> uh, government at Westminster. This also gives us another opportunity to acknowledge the excellent work done by mental health charities in Scotland who bring forward a powerful and a very well-informed voice on behalf of patients. Scotland has rightly been given accolade for being LGBT friendly, but in mental health we see the raw statistics that 48% of Scottish workers think that telling a manager about a mental health problem could result in losing their jobs. And only 22% think that co-workers have a good understanding of the importance of mental health. And I think we all need to take responsibility here. Uh, I acknowledge the journey of Gemma Patterson and uh, thank Liam uh, MacArthur for raising that. This government has gained an excellent, this parliament, sorry, has gained an excellent reputation for equality and anti-discrimination in employment. Uh, last week receiving an award for supporting the needs of deaf people in the parliament, uh, whether visitors or staff. So, presiding officer, I would like to call on the SPCB, of which I was a member, to sign up for this campaign, to undertake an online mental health check with staff, and taking action based on the programme, uh, based on the results, Commitment 2, in the CME Work programme. Dennis, yeah. Uh, Dennis uh, Robertson. I, I, I know you have a, a very limited amount of time, uh, but thank you for taking the event. Did, did the Parliament not undergo, two years ago, uh, a programme similar to CME in terms of the workforce uh, when you were a member of the SPCB? Mary I, I don't remember an online mental health check, but I'll quickly give way to an SPCB member, Liam MacArthur, who may answer that. Liam MacArthur. I, thank you very much, uh, Mary Scanlon, for taking an intervention. I, I think the point that uh, um, Dennis made is, is one that uh, sort of con concurs with my recollection, but I will undertake to the Chamber to follow this up with the SPCB and, and confirm. Mary Scanlon, I'll give I certainly you time don't think back. it was an online mental health check. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I say I was... Uh, Delighted to be part of the Scottish Parliament delegation led by our presiding officer uh, for Scotland Week in New York and indeed the visit to Chicago, when I chose to have meetings with the mental 
on mental health with the Health Commissioner for New York State, as well as a meeting with Alderman George Cardenas, Chairman of the Health Committee in Chicago. So if we can strip away the finances and the insurances uh, backing US health care and Obamacare, I do think there is something we can learn from their approach to mental health. Healthy Chicago focuses uh, on mental health, and every employee of the City of Chicago completes a questionnaire on their mental health at least once a year. This has led to higher demand for services due to Obamacare identifying the issue. And the questionnaire is also used as an incentive for people to address lifestyle issues. In New York, a similar uh, process is in place. And what I learned in New York, uh, presiding officer, is we often think about physical health or mental health. But what they've discovered in New York is if people have good uh, mental health, they are able to cope so much better with physical health and long-term chronic uh, conditions. Um, work is also being done there to look at the support for childhood trauma with support for the whole family and I was impressed at the priority work being done in Chicago with the prisoners at the county jail to provide services to the prisoner prior to release and to continue that on release uh, and a programme of uh, mental health for the families to stop the repetition of violence. So forgetting all the finances behind American uh, uh, health care, I do think we can learn from them from some of the mental health issues. So I, I know I'm probably going uh, over my time, but I just, I'll just say one more thing and leave my two pages of uh, speech for another day. And that is that here we still work in silos in mental health. I thought Dennis Robertson made a very good point, because if you go to the GP, and many GPs do not have any training in mental health. Some have some, and some have significant training. Some have none. So you go to the GP, and if you're lucky, after a few visits, you may be referred to a specialist, and you only have to wait 26 weeks. In America, and I'm not saying their health care is all good, but the psychiatrist and the psychologist work with primary care. And I think we need to do more about breaking down barriers and ensuring the point that Dennis Robertson made about the early diagnosis, the early intervention. And I think with that would come much more respect for the patient and the issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I call Hans Alamalik. Thank you very much and good afternoon, Presiding Officer. I thank Liam MacArthur for today's debate. Thank you very much, uh, Liam. And most people find it difficult enough with one problem at work, but if you suffer from mental health issues, you would have to deal with so much more. One in four people experience mental ill health, so we all need to change the way we think about people with mental health problems. The recently, recent the reality is that most people at some point will suffer from health and mental health challenges and will struggle to cope. Now in its 15th year, Mental Health Awareness Week aims to encourage the conversation around mental health to fight discrimination and stigma and promote good mental well-being. Last year alone, over 11 million work working days were lost due to stress anxiety and or depression. The economy cost of poor mental health has been estimated at 100 billion in the UK alone. Businesses and organizations know the impact of mental health in the workplace, but struggle to develop a mentally healthy working environment. Attention to mental health in workplace concerned me that only 22% of people think their workplace has a good understanding of employees with mental health issues, but that 88% want a better understanding of their colleagues in the workplace with mental health problems so they can behave appropriately, or in fact, in other matters, support appropriately. So there is a definite need for see me and work. See me at work works with employers to develop resources, training, and materials 
effecting effective case studies and other support to employers. They also work with people with lived experience of mental health issues to further understand the activities that can take place to support and change the needs in workplaces to transfer the culture and make work safe for people with mental health problems. Their overall aim is to support employers and making changes to their work practices to improve the working lives of employees with mental health problems. I encourage organizations to work with CME at work to help develop this important new initiative. I join Leon MacArthur in supporting CME in work and wish them every success to encourage employers for better awareness in the workplace to, in, to enhance and help support people with mental health issues. And at the closing, uh, presiding officer, I wanted to point out that mental health issues don't only affect well-being people. It affects people with disabilities, affects people with, uh, who are from minority communities, disadvantaged backgrounds, and the list goes on because it affects at least one in four people. And the issue around that then is that if they also have an additional burden to deal with in terms of mental health issues, it becomes quadruple. The issues to deal with that become so much that they break down. In the fam it affects their families, it affects the local uh, environment in the live-in, and they find it very difficult to cope with. And they Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much. And I, I thank Hans Alamalek for taking the intervention. I think the point he makes is um, underscored by recent research by Sam H, which pointed to, to those from ethnic minorities, also those in rural communities, where actually the, the social structures worked against people being open about the mental health illnesses they had, and therefore um, the, the chances of them seeking the support they needed um, were, were that bit more limited. So I, I'd very much echo the points that Hans Alamalek has made. Hans Alamalek. Thank you, President Officer. Yes, you, you, you make it, you, you've, you've actually summed it up better than I was managing to do. But yes, absolutely. But I think, just as a last point, Presiding Officer, I, I know I'm over my time. The, as, that's as all right. I'll give you the extra time for the interview. That's so kind of you. Thank you very much. Uh, just to, to, to round up what I'm trying to say is that this is an issue that it, which is very under... Um, understood. People don't understand the concept, they don't understand the implications of this, and I think uh, sometimes people feel that they don't actually need the support, and that couldn't be more further than the truth. People actually do need the support, and therefore I think it's absolutely crucial and essential that organizations like this are in fact helped and supported so they can help our communities out there. Thank you very much, President. Many thanks. Can I now invite Jamie Hepburn to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I also begin uh, by joining others in thanking Liam MacArthur for bringing uh, this motion before uh, Parliament is, as others have uh, mentioned, Mental Health Awareness Week. And I think it's very right that we hold this debate on uh, the CME campaign on work and mental health. And this uh, member's business debate continues the attention that our Parliament has on mental health. I think this is, I don't have the exact figures in front of me, I think I'm right in recollecting Officer, this is the fifth debate we've had in mental health uh, this year, and I'm proud that we uh, have uh, had uh, that number of debates uh, in this calendar year so far, with an estimated of uh, one third, quarter to one third of the population being affected by mental health disorders every year. It's quite rightly a topic that occupies us. We need to be as comfortable talking about mental ill health as we do talking about physical ill health and ensuring that this uh, Parliament uh, is, of course, the focus of political life in Scotland is engaged in debating issues around mental health is, I think, important. But it's not, of course, just talk uh, that's needed. The Scottish Social Attitude Survey shows that mental health awareness activities are still necessary, and uh, the interest uh, in uh, mental health uh, shown in this parliament and elsewhere demonstrates to me that there is a thirst uh, for that, and uh, I very much welcome uh, that fact. People are uh, still, sadly, experiencing negative attitudes because of their mental health uh, problem, and Timmy's attitude, uh, survey and attitudes in the workplace shows that there is uh, fear amongst people, fear that people might lose their job or not get promoted, fear that people will struggle to get a job if their mental health problems are known about, but there are also uh, some uh, bright signs, uh, some uh, three quarters or nearly three quarters of the people in the CME survey thought that uh, someone in their work with a mental health problem would be supported by colleagues uh, asking what they could do 
uh, to help, and more than half thought that someone in their work with a mental health problem would be supported by the workplace to make adjustments to their workload to allow them to remain in work. People are keen to understand mental health issues. Uh, many people want to do the right thing, and there are, are workplaces and colleagues and friends who are keen to learn. Uh, members have uh, referred to the, the YouGov poll, which I have just alluded to a moment ago. Mary Scanlon uh, mentioned that uh, some 48 per cent of people I think that someone in the work would be unlikely to disclose their mental health problem for fear of losing their job. 55 per cent thought people would be unlikely to disclose for fear of being passed over for promotion or being moved to another job. She was absolutely right uh, to highlight uh, these uh, uh, figures. Uh, more has to be done in uh, that regard. But I think it is also important out of uh, this survey that we more positively uh, report that 88 per cent uh, responded wanted a better understanding of uh, colleagues' mental health problems so they can behave uh, and respond appropriately. I think that shows a willingness amongst the uh, workforce uh, to help uh, tackle and reduce uh, stigma. And uh, those people can be helped in, in that uh, regard with CME's activities. The activities rightly focus on changing behaviour. CME was, uh, as Malcolm Chisholm mentioned, launched in 2002 with Scottish Government funding. We still contribute some £1 million per annum. CME quickly established a reputation as internationally groundbreaking in its scope, ambition and delivery. It has put the issue of mental health stigma firmly within the public arena. And CME and work aims to help employers develop a mentally healthy working environment. That is important for people who have work and the families they are supporting and for people who are looking for work as well. Being in the right work is good for health, remaining in work aids, recovery from a mental or indeed a physical health condition, return to work after illness improves health, long-term unemployment is associated with uh, poorer health in general and we know with more psychological uh, distress. Uh, yes, briefly. Dennis Robertson. Um, I thank the Minister for taking a brief intervention. The Minister, uh, maybe perhaps agree with me that sometimes uh, a mental health uh, illness is caused by the workplace and sometimes it's actually looking at what the, what's happening at work needs to be adjusted to enable that person to move on as well. Minister. Yes, I mean, just as uh, I would uh, and have been uh, articulating that being in work is good for a person's physical and uh, mental health, I would observe that if uh, things uh, aren't done properly, if uh, there is uh, too much stress in the workplace, that yes, absolutely, it can have a negative effect. But I think the overall pattern shows that where people are in employment, uh, their mental health is better than those who are in uh, long term uh, unemployment. Uh, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, to return to my uh, remarks on an individual, on individual basis and on a national basis, improving uh, the working lives of people with mental health problems is uh, the right thing uh, to do. Developing mentally health working uh, environments can support people into work and help them stay there. Uh, it makes sense to tackle this in a, a range of ways. And again, going back to the uh, intervention from Dennis Robertson, where it can be identified that uh, our individual workplace is not doing so well in that regard. This is particularly uh, important. The CME uh, toolkit has a, st a set of steps for employers to work through. CME has resources, training materials and case studies to help uh, support uh, employers. And I want to emphasise that, as the uh, Scottish Recovery uh, Network has said, people can and do recover from even those serious and long-term mental health problems. Employment can play a role in that and support in the work environment can play a role in that. Uh, structural changes in uh, workplace attitudes help. Individual attitudes also need to change. Uh, tackling stigma and discrimination should make people uh, more comfortable to seek treatment for uh, a mental health uh, problem. And when that uh, happens, a structural uh, response is, uh, of course, uh, required. Scotland was the first uh, nation in the UK to introduce a target uh, for uh, psychological uh, therapies for all ages. The target for boards is that patients get a referral to treatment for psychological therapies within 18 weeks. Between October and December 2014, there were over 30,000 referrals to psychological therapies. That compares to over 25,000 in the previous quarter. We are seeing more people coming forward for treatment. And the NHS boards are responding. The latest data shows that the average adjusted waiting time for psychological therapies is eight weeks, and 81.4 per cent of people were seen within 18 weeks. That is some progress. I know some boards are doing 
better than others. And I want to thank all the staff and the boards who are working to help people get access to the treatment they need. But I recognise we still need to go further. Still, we are investing an additional £15 million over the next three years to improve mental... Uh, do I have time? Yes, yes indeed. Briefly. Mary Scanlon. Yes, how can a general practitioner refer someone to psychological therapies without being uh, able 100 per cent to make uh, an accurate diagnosis of the mental health issue. Psychological therapies do not work for several mental health conditions. Minister. Well, of course, I would observe that there are a range of options. Uh, that it doesn't uh, necessarily the case that a GP would uh, necessarily refer for psychological therapies. Of course, that is uh, an appropriate uh, option uh, for them to do so. And picking up on the point that uh, Mary Scanlon made in her contribution, because seeing as she's mentioned uh, primary care, in her intervention to me, and she raised it in the chamber last week. I just had uh, recently a meeting with the Royal College of uh, General uh, Practice, and of course we discussed this issue. And it is actually the case, of course, that GPs are uh, trained in uh, mental health. That's part of their core uh, training, and uh, they have got to, of course, constantly uh, upskill and uh, continue uh, that training. And there is support there uh, for that. Uh, to return to uh, my remarks, and I'll close uh, shortly. Uh, President officer, we are investing an additional £15 million pounds over the next three years to improve mental health services, which will be targeted towards the Mental Health Innovation Fund, as well as to boost staff numbers to address the mental health needs of children and adolescents. This spending comes as part of NHS expansion on mental health of nearly £900 million pounds in 2013-14. Uh, mental illness is uh, one of the top public health challenges in Europe. Our work in Scotland across the sectors is key in meeting that challenge. We uh, need uh, support of uh, the NHS, the third sector, and I'm pleased to see it uh, to support CME's role in uh, that regard. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Minister. And that concludes Liam MacArthur's debate on supporting CME and work. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.